All right, guys, so this is kind of a fun lesson. I don't know. I, I, I kind of, with producing these graphs, you know, it's it reinforces it. It's, you know, we've been taught so much about, you know, just creating a table of values and plotting points, but the derivative reinforces that what we're seeing is actually true. That's what's kind of cool. And so what, I'm not going to bore you with this, this example. I think we did this to verbatim this morning already right in this morning's lessons it's just another question on like producing the graph using the the first derivative what i want to do this afternoon is take a look at what the second derivative can tell us right in terms of reinforcement right of what the graph's supposed to look like okay so um if i were to look at you recall if if i were to say um this is kind of a nice depiction actually if I were to switch from going from like a positive slope here, right? Obviously, everybody agrees that's a positive slope. And then here, I have a negative slope, right? It's this transition between the two that we defined as being, okay, well, there's there's a maximum here. I'm going to switch the size of this. There's a max here, right? But is there another way to prove that that's a maximum versus a minimum is our question. And so it turns out that there is, right? So if we take a look here, f of x is concave up. We're going to do some new new um, terminology here, concave up. If the second derivative is greater than 0, or y, y double prime is equal to this different notation, okay? Um, it's concave down, right? Concave down. If the second derivative is less than zero. Okay. And for an inflection point, the second derivative will equal zero. Okay, so we're gonna see an application of this. Okay, an inflection point would be something that we defined this morning as being a turning point. Okay. So here, this is what we would say, um, on this portion of the graph here, I'll do it in red so we can see. On this portion of the graph here, we're going to say that this is concave down. Right? In other words, f double prime, oh, not zero, sorry. f double prime of x is less than zero. Okay, and on this interval over here, this is what we would call why is it called concave down? Well, it's it's switching from, you know, you're you're getting it's following the shape of the curve basically, right? This the intersection of those two tangent lines, I suppose, that I drew on there, right? And in the middle, they're like the slope's going to zero. Well, the same thing can happen on this side, right? Where we're making a transition from uh, negative slope to positive slope. This is what we're going to define as being. Uh, if I write in black here, so you guys can see, um, from here to here on this interval. We're going to say that this is concave up, right? Where f double prime of x is greater than zero. Okay, and so beside here, this is kind of uh, this is an important box, I suppose. Let's see what kind of see what color this fills us in with. Okay, still green. Okay, this is an important box. This kind of summarizes it, right? So for a local maximum. Right, for a local max, we're going to see that the graph should look like this. Right, if it follows these rules here, right? If the first derivative is equal to zero and the second derivative is less than zero, it tells me it's opening down the second derivative. Okay, this part here. And the opposite would be true for a local minimum. The second derivative tells me it's opening up well there you go right but the first derivative is still equal to zero because there's a minimum and a maximum there right on either portion of the graph okay so we're going to do an example down here right and we're going to see very clearly the difference between uh what we call a well the point of a inflection or a turning point versus what a uh, maximum minimum are right and it's quite cool to see um how the second derivative can help us in in the overall picture right because this is not what we'll see in a sec okay I'll, I'll talk about it in a second okay so let's 
let's have a look here. We're going to follow much the same work, right, that we've been doing, with the exception that we're going to add this extra layer of the second derivative on at the end. Okay, so we want to find and classify all local extrema of the function f of x is equal to 3x to the power of 5 minus 25x cubed plus 60x. Okay, and we're going to use the second derivative test to illustrate our, gra our results graphically, right? So first things first, I would say let's let's write out the original function, right? So we're going to say that's going to equal uh, 3, sorry, I'm just copying this, 3x to the power of 5 minus 25x cubed plus 60x. Okay, and if I were to derive this once, right, I would say do all the derivative work. No problems, right? So let's say 15x to the power of 4 minus 75x squared plus 60. Okay, and then if I were to derive it again, well, you guys have seen this. If this was a, if this was a, a, a like from your um, investigation from last Friday, this could be a position. This could be velocity, then this could be acceleration. You guys have seen this already. Okay, what we're doing is putting this into graphical terms now, okay? So we could say, okay, well, this is going to be equal to uh, 60x cubed uh, minus 150x. Okay, there's your second derivative. Now, after you've gotten to the stage, you draw a line here, you have all three of your derivatives lined up. We can say, all right, well, let's let's solve for where or find where the critical points are, right? So for maximum and minimums, it's the same work. For max, we're looking to identify the points of interest in this x column, right? So for a max slash min, I suppose it could be a minimum as well, um, f prime of x is equal to zero. So let's let's find the points in which the first derivative is equal to zero because that's going to identify all of the critical points. Okay, so let's do that. So uh, write that out. 15x to the 4 minus 75x uh, squared plus 60 has to equal zero. Okay, if I were to divide everything by 15 here, right, which looks divisible, right, if I divide by 15, then I get x to the power of 4 minus uh, what's 75 by 15, 5x squared plus uh, 60 divided by 15 should be 4. Okay, a little bit more manageable now. Okay, it looks a little bit nicer. This here, we could factor this. Okay, it factors 2. To save some space here, go fact to x squared minus 1, x squared minus 4. Okay? And that has to equal 0. Okay? So, from there, we have two differences of squares, right? Which we could again factor to be x minus 1 times x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 times x plus 2 has to equal 0. Okay? Now, so we can obviously find out that x has to equal plus minus 1, x has to equal plus minus 2. Okay, so here are your critical points. These are, these are the four. There are four critical points for this particular graph. Right? So, Let's have a look. So we'll identify, okay, we're going to look at negative 2, we're going to look at negative 1. And then we wanted to see, okay, well, what's the behavior at 1 and 2, because those are our critical points. Let's check the middle, okay, 0. Let's check what the graph does at 0. Okay, so if I plug in values um, into the original function, just to save you guys time, right, you're going to see negative 16 here, you see negative 38 here, you're going to see 0, interesting. And... Um, 38 here and 16 here. Okay. Now, if I were to do this again, we already know something, right? We know that these are the points. These are the points here. 
that set the derivative equal to zero, right? So we know this column, zero, 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 zero. What happens? What is the derivative? You know, so I'm looking here. Is the derivative positive or negative when I plug in a value of zero? Well, if I plug in a value of zero, I just get the positive 60 out on the end. Okay. Now, if I were to do all of this work again and look at, okay, well, what are the values of the second derivative, right? What do they come out to be, positive or negative, right? We can see, okay, well, if I were to plug in negative 2, I'm going to see that that comes out to be negative, and negative 1 is going to come out to be positive. And we'll skip over 0 here for a second. If I plug in um, 1, I'm going to see a negative. And if I plug in zero, I'm going to see a positive. Okay. Well, if I just plug in zero here into this second equation, change the color, right? Second derivative equation. If I plug in zero there, I'm obviously going to get zero. So what, what's going on here? This is an interesting point, right? Obviously something's going on there. Okay. We have a bunch of stuff, right? We also know from our definition up here that if... If we substitute and we find out that at any particular x value, we see that the second derivative is negative or positive, depending on what we see, we can see what the actual graph should look like. If it's going to be concave up or concave down. Well, a negative indicates from here, we have a local maximum if the derivative is equal to zero, which it is, it's good, and the second derivative is less than zero, so negative. That's, that's the scenario right here. So what's the graph look like? Well, the graph looks like, like this at this point. Okay. And then the exact opposite would be true for a local minimum, right? If I have a positive second derivative, that means it's opening up. And then we can do the same thing down here. So what's going on here? What is this? Well, this is what we call if the second derivative is equal to zero we have an inflection point, a point of inflection. Okay, and so we can produce the graph. Let's produce the graph and see what this actually means because this is this is where things are going to get interesting and, and contextualize this entire table for you. Okay, this is a great table. Okay, it's going to contextualize the table for you, the graph. Okay, so let's, let's just plot these points, right? So we can see that, uh, I don't know, Maybe we set uh, negative 2 here and negative 1 and 1 and 2, okay? We could say negative 2 and, I don't know, 16 is somewhere in here. We could make it up pretty much. It's just a sketch, right? And then this would be negative 2 and 16. Uh, where's the right? This is the best way to write this. How about uh, I'll write them in red so that we can see negative 16. And then we can plot the point... Uh, Maybe I'll just do all the points in red so we can see. Okay, and then we can plot the point negative 1 and negative 38. That's going to be, I don't know, somewhere down in here. Doesn't need to be anything too crazy. And then we have the point 0, 0 up here, 0, 0. And then we have um, 1 and 38 would be way up here. Try to follow something similar to what I did in the bottom. So something about here, 1 and 38. And then I would have the point 2 and 16. So, so I don't know, something like this. Okay, so let's let's connect these, these points. Okay, we know, you know, everything left of... Actually, we didn't really know that. But we know that there has to be a pivotal point at negative 2 or a critical point as a, a maximum. Right, which means the graph has to do something like this. Okay, so we know everywhere left for now, for our purposes, like in the immediate immediate vicinity of negative two, I suppose, the graph has to be the slope of the graph has to be negative. Okay. It has to create a maximum and then it has to come down here. Okay. Now what this is mapping, the second derivative is mapping um, points in time where the graph is is switching between concave up and concave down. That's what the second derivative is doing. Okay, and we're going to see that right here. Okay, so let's pretend I erase this. 
because this, this is the point in time where um, this is going to create a uh, an understanding. Okay, so right here we have to get up to here, and we know that there has to be a, a maximum again. Okay, and then it has to come back down and, and shoot through here, just based on the on the derivative test. Right, we can see that when x equals one, it has to be concave down. Because it's negative, right? So we know that that has to be a maximum. So we know that the graph is going to look something like that, okay? Now, um, what happens in between here is the interesting part. Well, all of this is the interesting part, okay? What we're going to see, and maybe I'll redraw that second piece there. What we're going to see here is this has to switch from... This would be here. This would be what we call concave up, right? But all of a sudden, like we make this, we have to make this transition between concave up, like what we're seeing, right? To fit this portion of the graph, this is all concave up in here because the second derivative was uh, greater than zero, so positive. But then something interesting happens when we get to the other side of the graph. This has to switch. All of this graph has to be concave down in order to make sense. Right? And so it's at zero, zero that we have this, 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 it's a critical point, or it's, it's a point of inflection, I suppose, right? Where the, um, the graph has to transition between these two scenarios, between being concave up and concave down. That's what we call a point of inflection, right? Or turning point. That's what we saw in the cubic graph, right? Where the graph was kind of was, was, was kind of concave down and then it switched to go to concave up. That's a turning point or point of inflection, okay? So that's, I don't know, this is kind of interesting from that standpoint, right? We can, we can well, I'll make a list here of, of, of important information here. So we'll say, you know, therefore, negative 2 and negative 16 and uh, 1 and 38 are local max, maximums, I suppose we could say. Maxes doesn't make too many maximums. We'll write the whole word. Maximums. Um, negative 1 and 38. And uh, 2 and 16 are local minimum. And um, the point zero zero is an inflection point. Okay, guys. Um, so that's about. I'm gonna hit pause there. Okay, because it's a lot of talking. We'll do some more examples. There's lots here to talk about today. Okay, I'm gonna hit pause, and uh, we'll continue with example three.